President Trump remains hospitalized right now, but he tweeted not long ago he will go home today. The latest just ahead. And an Arizona lawmaker is also hospitalized right now on a ventilator as he is also treated for COVID-19. Plus, today is the last day to register to vote for the presidential election. What you need to know. 12 at 12 starts right now, 12 minutes, no commercials, and now we're live statewide, so big shout out to all of our viewers in Tucson. We're on TV, on the go, on the free 12 News app, Facebook, and YouTube. Hey guys, it's Rachel here. Let's head straight over to Crystal for a look at your forecast 411 on this Monday. Chris? Halloween decor or just channeling how we all feel right now in this very dry desert. It's been a whopping 200 days now since Parker had a drop in the rain gauge. We haven't seen measurable rain in Yuma or Lake Havasu in 170 some days. Las Vegas 168 and make that 140 back to back dry days in LA. We're also breaking record highs left and right this year. We've tallied up 13 of them in Flagstaff. We took it to 20 so far for Tucson because we have our eyes on more record highs in the days ahead. Phoenix, we've locked in 25, but you might as well put a plus sign next to that because today, ooh, it's gonna be a close call with record territory in Phoenix. Tucson looks like we're smoking that record in Kingman this afternoon. Winslow, that Mercury's creeping close to that 90 degree mark. 84 would be a new record in Sholo and Flagstaff could end up tying the 1991 record for the date. We have now spent about 50% of this year in triple digit territory in Phoenix. 137 days. We're going to be racking up more triple digit days in Tucson too. 104 is the count right now and 89 80 degree days in Flagstaff. By the way, it's only going to take six more days in Phoenix to tie the 1989 record for the most triple digit days in a year, which is set at 143. At least we're not going to take it to 116, which is exactly what we did on this date in 1917 in Centennial AZ. That was the hottest October temperature on record in the United States. We're going to have some high clouds out there blotting out the sun, but we're keeping it in above average near record territory through pretty much the first half of this work week. All right, thanks a lot, Crystal. Turning now to continuing coverage of the president's battle with COVID-19. President Trump spent the weekend at Walter Reed receiving treatment there, but the administration is under fire today for an alleged lack of transparency. Daryl Forges is outside Walter Reed in Maryland with the very latest. After a weekend in the hospital, the message from the White House is that President Trump is doing well and responding to treatment for COVID-19. We're still uh, optimistic that uh, based on his unbelievable progress and, and how strong he's been in terms of uh, his fight against this COVID-19 disease that he will be released, but that decision won't be made until later today. But there are critical questions over the severity of his illness as the administration and the president's doctors are facing criticism for the lack of transparency and backlash for the focus on optics over safety. But what took place outside of uh, Walter Reed uh, with that political theater um, was detrimental. There's risks to transporting a patient completely unnecessarily with severe COVID-19 out of a hospital area. It's detrimental to the people that were inside that vehicle with him. President Trump up early Monday and tweeting from the hospital, but not providing any insight into his illness. This as contact tracers are going to work in New Jersey following a fundraiser the president held at his golf club hours before Trump says he tested positive for the virus around 1 a.m. on Friday morning. This is borders on reckless in terms of exposing people, not just in New Jersey, uh, but it looks like from folks around the country who have now scattered, by the way. At Walter Reed Medical Center in Bethesda, Maryland, I'm Daryl Forges. And not long ago, the president tweeted he will be heading back to the White House later this evening. We're learning today, though, that Kaylee McEnany, the White House press secretary, has also tested positive for the virus. She's the latest in a number of officials who have been infected, including at least three Republican senators, the president's advisor, Hope Hicks, as well as his former advisor, Kellyanne Conway. Arizona State Representative Lorenzo Sierra is at John Hopkins Hospital right now with complications related to COVID-19. He was taken to the hospital this morning from Washington, D.C., from a Washington, D.C. hospital. We're told he is intubated and resting comfortably in ICU while he receives treatment. Sierra and his family live in Avondale, but were in Washington visiting family when he got sick. 
The Arizona Department of Health Services reported 316 new COVID-19 cases in the state today with one additional death. That brings the total of deaths due to COVID to more than 5,700. Today is the last day Arizonans can register to vote in this year's presidential election. Team 12's Jen Wallace showing us everything that we need to know to make sure our voices are heard. Yeah, very important here. If you have not registered to vote yet, don't worry, there's still time, but it is running out. You have until 1159 tonight in Arizona to secure your voice in the upcoming presidential election. And there are a lot of places to register easily online, also by mail and in person in our state. Here are some of the latest tips. If you've moved or recently changed your name, you should update that information. And if you're not sure about your registration status, you can check that at my.arizona.vote. Remember to register. You have to be a U.S. citizen, a resident of Arizona with your county listed on your voter registration, and 18 or older by the day of the next regular election, along with a few other legal requirements. Now, if you need assistance with your ballot, there are large print, braille, and ballots available in different languages here in our state. Secretary of State Katie Hobbs says they want to make sure voters know all of their options so they're ready to go on Election Day. What we want to make sure is that voters know what all of their options are and that they make the plan that works for them. Make sure you know where to go, the ID that you need to bring if you're voting in person, have your sample ballot ready so that you that you can speed up your time in the polling place. And another important date coming up this week, Wednesday is the first day that election officials can mail early ballots to voters. Now I know we just shared a lot of information with you, so if you missed any of that, you can go to our website, 12news.com slash plan your vote. We have everything we just talked about there and more. For now, we're in Phoenix, Jen Wall, 12 News. All right, Jen, thanks so much. A new NBC News and Wall Street Journal poll shows Democratic nominee Joe Biden with a 14 point lead nationally over President Trump. The poll was taken before the president's coronavirus diagnosis was announced. President Trump will no longer be campaigning in Arizona today because he's recovering at the hospital. However, we're still expecting big name visits from both campaigns. Team 12's Matt Uris has more now from the Republicans Phoenix office. That's right, the president was scheduled to be here today, making stops in Flagstaff and Tucson. Since he's battling COVID-19, though, he's sending his second in command. Vice President Mike Pence is expected to be here Thursday. He's scheduled to speak at a tactical gear supply plant in Peoria. The event is set for 1130 in the morning. The VP's visit isn't all that unexpected. When he was in town last month, he told supporters he planned to be back the day after the vice presidential debate. Meanwhile, former Vice President Joe Biden and Senator Kamala Harris are making their first visit to Arizona this week. They are also expected to be here on Thursday. We're still waiting to learn more details about their trip. Like we mentioned, these visits come just a day after the vice presidential debate, which is happening Wednesday in Salt Lake City. Stay with 12 News for complete coverage of that event. And of course, the visits by both campaigns the following day. And don't forget, only 29 days now until Election Day. In Phoenix, Matt Uris, 12 News. All right, Matt, thanks so much. If you haven't filled out your 2020 census yet, you need to do it now. Today is the deadline to have it done, and it's really important that you're counted. The census will dictate how much state and federal money is given to public resources. You can fill it out online, by phone, or by mail. It takes about two minutes. And you only have to do it every 10 years. Come on. Hashtag most click. Here are the stories piquing everyone's interest right now. It's a boy. About two weeks ago, the National Zoo Giant showed off its giant panda cub getting its first checkup from a vet. Vets say he appears healthy and strong. You can read updates and watch the cub with its mom on the zoo's giant panda cam. Barbie is getting in the election spirit. Mattel is releasing a Susan B. Anthony doll today as part of its inspiring women line. Anthony was one of the nation's best known abolitionists and suffragists. She did die 14 years before women won voting rights. Regal Cinemas will temporarily shut down theaters this week. That shutdown comes a day after the latest James Bond film, No Time to Die, was delayed until spring 2021. In a statement, Cineworld did not say when theaters could reopen, but the company will continue to monitor how the coronavirus is impacting markets worldwide. About 45,000 employees will not have jobs during the shutdown. 
For the first weekend in October, a few old witches tried to work on a little magic at the box office. So did they succeed? David Daniel reveals our early estimates for the top five films. Who's there? Stop! Can you hear me? The Middle East thriller Infidel, starring Jim Caviezel, bounced back into the top five, grossing $455,000. Home. Unhinged is still hanging around. The action thriller stayed in fourth place with $870,000 for a domestic total of more than $18 million. Globally, it's made $33 million, just about what the film cost to make. I started panicking. People got hurt. The New Mutants fell to third place on ticket sales of $1 million. It's made nearly $21 million overall at the domestic box office. <laughs> Hocus Pocus threw a scare into the competition. Disney's re-release of the 1993 Halloween comedy made $1.9 million, nearly enough to fly off with the crown. To do what I do, I need some idea of the threat we face. Tenet resisted the Hocus Pocus hex, taking in $2.7 million for its fifth straight weekend win. The thriller has made $45 million domestically and crossed the $300 million mark worldwide. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. I love when they bring the throwbacks back. Time now, though, for a look ahead at the stories you'll be talking about a little later today. Safety officials issuing a new warning about an ongoing car recall issue after a deadly crash in the valley is linked to a malfunctioning airbag. Plus, your laundry could be making you sick. The best ways to keep your family safe and probably smelling a little bit better, too. And that's your 12 at 12, the facts on everything you need to know in just 12 minutes. No commercials. We're always on anywhere, anytime on 12news.com, the free 12 News app, and our social media channels as well.